So the question we're going to ask today is, how can we guard our hearts from lust? And when we talk about lust, we're talking about something that overtakes you that you feel like a slave to. It goes past your own free will and you feel like you can't help yourself. And so um, lust doesn't have to be sexual in nature, although that's what we associate it with most. Um, it can be for money, for power, for violence. Um, there's all kinds of things that we can feel like we've been enslaved to. Um, you, we understand this with any addiction. And we've seen the destructive nature of addiction in all kinds of forms um, in people. It's just common knowledge. And there's a lot of money put into helping people get free from addiction. Um, but right here we're going to look at the scripture in Job. And in Job 31, 1, Job says, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a young woman. And this idea of making a covenant with his eyes is significant in the sense that most of the time we watch whatever, we listen to whatever, and we, um, we don't think much about the consequences of what we put into our mind. The images we put into our mind, the songs we put into our ears. We don't recognize that the Bible says the eyes are actually a window into your soul. And I think there's also other windows like your ears and your ability you know, to be in relationships physically. That actually accesses your soul in a way we don't recognize. And so when our souls become heavy and become weighted down or burdened or full of anxiety or full of fear or full of just shame. So a lot of times we don't realize that we have opened the door to our soul by watching something or listening to something or being part of a relationship with someone physically or even just emotionally we have opened a part of our soul and given part of our soul over to um, to this thing this person this place this idea this concept um, so what Job is talking about is guarding his eyes from this kind of thing um, He's guarding his eyes, saying, if this comes before my eyes, the covenant I've made is that I will look away. And it sounds really simple. And it actually is a lot more simple than we make it, and make it a lot more complicated than it has to be. Um, but music, let's just talk about music. It's a meditation. I recognized when I was younger, I loved music that, hacked, that helped me to feel less alone in my sadness, less alone in my anger. Um, and those things are good, but when they keep you there, uh, it, sometimes the meditation on it can make the sadness greater, can justify all of the anger and hatred that you might have in your heart. It can justify a feeling of superiority, which I think rock, rock music does a lot, because we sort of see beneath the surface of things and we call out injustices. And in doing this, we can get this superiority complex of saying, well, they don't get it. And um, only people who listen to this kind of music or have this kind of attitude really get it or understand. And this kind of place of superiority keeps us from being able to see from other people's perspectives. It keeps us from being able to grow as a person in our heart. And it shuts off a lot of our ability to love others the way we were intended to love or created to love and grow. And so, um, so it's very important in, in, this, in this journey of stewarding our soul to pay attention to what we're watching, pay attention to what we're listening to, pay attention to what, we're, what relationships we're connecting ourselves with in our hearts because it, it is a door to your soul in a lot of ways. And sometimes we don't recognize the damage that it does and the damage that we're doing to the people around us. or But in Job's case, he, he took that very seriously, saying, I'm gonna turn my head when I don't wanna see something. 
you know, in, in, in this chapter of the book, um, chapter five, we talk about, I talk about lust and pornography and the, what, one of the things that pornography does that we don't realize is it completely dehumanizes people. It dehumanizes people and it cheapens our whole, the whole purpose of sexuality that God gave us. Sexuality was meant to be vulnerable. It was meant to be a place that you had in the context of a covenant that was safe, that you, that two people are vulnerable together and they're giving somebody something that's exclusive and, and precious and worth so much. No one else gets to enjoy this part of who you are. No one else gets to enjoy this part of who your spouse is. And yet, here we take the person in pornography, we take that person and we turn them into an image that has no feelings, that has no, there's no cost involved, there's no vulnerability on your side. It makes it completely cheap, cheap compared to what it's meant to be, this powerful, like, Ex exclusive sharing of your heart and your soul. So it disconnects the soul, which it, 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 it pretends to disconnect the soul. But really the soul is very much being calloused, becoming calloused to this portal that is meant to connect you with somebody. And it, and it, it dehumanizes people in this process. It animalizes our sexuality. And so what Job is committing to is he's committing to keep his heart from that. He's committing to keep himself, to keep this part of his nature sacred and precious and set aside for God and for the purpose that God had for him. So there's a lot that we can say about this idea of what we open ourselves up to through what we look at and through what we hear and through what we, even our mouths, um, when we speak out something, it's like a contract we make with our souls. So when we speak out certain words, it's actually, those words actually go, it says that it's, it's when we speak, out of the heart comes all these vile things. And so it, it makes a contract, it's like agreeing with thoughts that come. All kinds of thoughts can come, you know, it's like air traffic. We talked about this earlier. Just because there's a thought that comes doesn't mean it's your own. It doesn't mean that you've sinned. It, 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 it means that you have been solicited. You've been given a commercial, in a sense. Do you want this? Do you want this in your mind? Do you want this in your heart? And you get to say, no, I don't. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to think about that. I'm not going to stay there. I'm going to move on to something different, something that's going to grow me in my soul, not be destructive to my soul. Um, or you can accept it and you can agree with it and, and do that through the words you speak out of your mouth. So right now we're just going to pray over our hearts and all the different portals that we have into our soul. Our eyes, our ears, our mouth, um, our relationships. So God, I just pray right now. If there's anything that I have received into my soul through any of these portals, I pray that you would come in and clean me out, Father. Clean out my soul so I have no connection with anything that's, that's not good and healthy for my soul. And I pray that I would begin to guard my heart by guarding my eyes and my ears and my mouth and my relationships so that I speak what you, the truth into my soul. So that I listen to things that are going to uplift me and not tear me down. So that I watch things that inspire me and not put me in a place of destructive nature, despair, or or just lying about humanity and those around me or about myself. I pray that you bless my heart to be protected, God. And Lord, I ask that you would interrupt that process and give me a way out. Your word says that, that whatever temptations come, 
you give us a way out always. So I pray we would take the, the that when the temptations come, when the ideas come, the solicitations come to agree with something dark and destructive, that we would look for the way out. We would look for the exit and go there. And I pray we would recognize our responsibility to guard our soul, to guard our hearts. Your, your word says our bodies are a temple of your Holy Spirit. So I pray that as you dwell in our hearts, we would make sure to keep our hearts clean so that you have a clean, beautiful house to stay in. And we wouldn't pollute our souls by watching things that are destructive, listening to things that are destructive, speaking out and agreeing with things that are destructive, but instead we would steer that well. Thank you, Father, for giving us this responsibility and right to steward our hearts. Help us, Lord, to do that well. In Jesus' name, amen.